Welcome back to the studio for the second episode of the fourth season of Punch TV. We have been so busy running around town. We did Free Comic Book Day and we did our Nerd Crawl and we did Sask Expo, but it's really nice to be back in the comfort of the studio with all the fancy computers that make our show special. And that's the theme of our show this week is computer, which I mean, in this day and age, it kind of seems a little redundant because everything is computers. But when I was growing up, uh, you know, get the little plug into the TV, 10, print, you smell like farts, 20, go to 10, run. You smell like farts. You smell like farts. You smell like farts. I thought it was hilarious. And, uh, you know, that was my early computing experience. Graduated, of course, to the uh, Commodore 64 and the rest is history. But uh, computers are in every aspect of our lives. If you love comics, there are web comics. There are comics about computers. You can't go to a movie these days without having computers in it. Everything is computers. So today we are gonna talk about a couple of different ways that computers are affecting our lives locally, especially with regards to comics. We have special guest, The Riz, coming in and he's created a platform with a couple guys um, for comic creators. So not only is it a way that artists and writers can collaborate and get together, but it's also a way that they can sell their products online digitally and get access to the whole wide world because that's a, a problem that a lot of comic creators have is how to distribute what you've already made so very excited about that and we're also going to talk to a guy who works for a company that allows it to be easier for comic creators or comic collectors to um, catalog all their stuff and know what they have so that they can you know make those lists and complete all those little empty spots in their collection so Steve Steve Boyd is going to be here and talking to Tony, the collector, about how to maximize your collecting ability. And I think he's going to bring some special little things to show off to. So lots to look forward in this episode of Punch. So stay tuned. Well, I'm very excited to have a special guest today. I've got the Riz on yes. hand. And uh, yeah, talking about computers and what it can do for comic creators, you've created something pretty exciting. Why don't you tell us about it? I have. So uh, myself and Scott RP, my partner in crime and ultimate power duo, uh, we are starting a new website called Draw Me In Comics. And it's an online hub for independent comic creators to post their wares and sell their comics and just help make themselves known to the the populace in general. Because that's hard. I mean, I, I know a lot of artists and, and creators who, like, they're amazing creators, but it's hard to take that extra step to market yourself and, like, get your work out in people's hands. So to have something that's going to help them distribute, I think, is going to be a boon. And it's just like the music industry, too. Like, it, when you're the, the small person in on the totem pole, you're the person who's trying to make your name known, we're competing against major labels and lots of money, it's really difficult. So you yeah. won't have a place that independent artists could come sort of like be the central hub that people will know to go to to find the new up-and-coming artists and writers in comics. Yeah, yeah, find all the goody, goody yes. stuff. Get on, on the ground floor. Exactly. Maybe get some commissions from these up-and-comers. Yeah, that'll happen. That will happen eventually. So, awesome. so right now, if you are an independent artist, you can post your comic. Um, people can come to our site and download it the old-fashioned way. But writers can also post scripts and pitches for ideas. So something that we're adding besides just the online store is a collaborative networking type of platform. Yeah. So if I'm a writer, um, which I am, coincidentally <laughs> enough, so it was a good, a good choice, uh, I can post a script, I can look at different artists, and I find uh, an artist I like or their work that I like. We actually have it set up. You can click a little button that basically says, I would like to work with you. And you click, Ooh. and a message will go right to that artist, and then you can network back and forth through our site and hopefully create some new projects as well. So it's not just an advertising platform and a sales platform, but we're hoping to make it an online community yeah. where writers and artists can get together and make new comics. Well, and it's global, right? Because yes. like it doesn't matter where you live, you can you know send your stuff back and forth and work together, and that's really awesome. Mm -hmm. So okay, throwback to uh, Ultimate Power Duo. Yes. You guys did like an incredibly huge project a couple of years ago where you uh, wrote a script. It was. Uh, along with music, mm -hmm. um, but you needed artists. So how did you find artists then, when before this kind of thing existed? With great difficulty. <laughs> so when we made our project, it was a 20-track concept record, and each song came with its own two- to five-page comic story to go with it. And we wanted to make a very jam 
comic. So have different artists doing different songs. They could take their own special spin and art on it. And when we sat down to do it, we realized, how do we find comic artists? And there really wasn't any way of, of doing it then. So we went to the uh, Joel Schuster award page and just said, who won awards in the last couple of years <laughs> that are from Western Canada and started there. We just started, you know, as Scott would say, cold calling people. We just would send out emails wow. saying, this is our project. What do you think? We'd like you to be involved. And eventually we found the artist that, you know, we got a chance to work with, which was great. But that was part of where this whole idea came from. We thought, wouldn't it be great if there was one place that if you're looking for a specific artist, or even just any artist, depending, because sometimes you don't even know what you want. Right. You, you think, oh, I want a, a manga-inspired comic or something. And then you might realize, you know, maybe a, a cool black and white, uh, you know, pulp noir thing would be cool. Um, so if you come to our site, you can find all these comics and find these artists and see what they can do and, and really connect that way. That's uh, awesome. And it so totally aligns with Punch. I mean, Punch started as a magazine for local people to like put their art in there so that other people could see mm -hmm. it. And again, hopefully try to get some collabs happening. So it's so awesome to see an extension cool. of that happening in our in our very own backyard. Yeah. So. And as it gets going and we get more established, I'm hoping to even do some anthologies. Like maybe we'll have um, writers can post a script and we'll have different artists take a stab at it. Or maybe we'll have like the Draw Me In monthly anthology that will be either free or for a reduced rate or that type of thing. So awesome. um, another advantage to our, our site that we're really excited about, we have it set up that if you post your comics and sell that as an artist, you get to keep whatever it is that you've asked for the comic. So uh, we're not taking any of the money out of the artist's pocket. Yep. Um, so you can pick your price and, and go from there. So Woohoo! Yeah. Awesome. So we're hoping that will help too. So yeah. um, we just, you know, we just think it'd be really cool for independent artists to have a place to go that also isn't being sponsored by a big company that also owns the big names. Right. Because they make enough money right now. So they do. So it'd yep. be nice to give some other people a chance to uh, get their names out there as well. Super. Okay. Keep it small. Keep it local. All that good exactly, stuff. Exactly. Exactly. So if anybody out there is interested in participating in this or just wants to check it out or wants to discover some new talent, drawmein.com. You can check it out. Drawmeincomics.com. <gasps> Thank you. Yeah. Drawmeincomics.com. And uh, we've actually formed a little club at Amazing Stories as well. And we're going to be meeting every every second Wednesday of the month um, and anyone who's interested in art or writing and you know just wants to hang out with a bunch of creative people is certainly welcome to come it's 6 30 to 8 every second Wednesday of the month mm -hmm. so draw me in comics thank you so much for coming and sharing this exciting thank new platform with us and uh, hopefully you'll get uh, some folks checking out your site hopefully hopefully so that'd be great awesome thank you so much for coming thanks for having me all right, after the break. Tweet beat. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, t-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com. In person on 8th Street in Saskatoon. Darth Vader, are you afraid of spiders? No. No, I don't think so. Are you afraid of black cats? No. Are you afraid of public speaking? No. How about, are you afraid of the dark? Is that a joke? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently so, right now, lovely ladies and or dudes, my name is Hank, this is Luke, this is Tony. Woo. Today on Tweet Beat, we're going to be talking about many things that you should be watching, reading, and listening to, so we should probably get right to it. So here we go. It's Tweet Beat. Uh, season two of The Sinner on USA Network is just as tense, creepy, and intriguing as the first season, but with El Aisha shining in a stirring role. This season is the best. Nine out of ten. Season three, please. Yes, season three, please. It's Tony. It's Tony the Rookie. We must be living in weird times because we just spent several weeks on a vision quest with Quatch. Everything was going swell, then in walks Barbarella, and everything went to hell in a ham basket of eggs. I can talk. 90 out of 100, buy it, listen, love it. Have you heard Quatch before? I've never, but I love Barbarella. The they they I, have released yeah. like a zillion albums. This is one of their best. So if you want to get into Quatch, now is the time. Okay. Uh, I can do that, and I, I probably can get that on my, uh, my machine that I can yell names out and it plays it. So, yes, yeah. correct. Clutch. Ha, ha, ha.
tell us about a show we should be watching. Maybe something well, creepy. Well, the first season of Castle Rock on Hulu starts off in a prison beneath a prison where an innocent or evil or an innocent turned evil, Bill Skasgard, is locked in a cage and ends right back where it started. Or did it? Or did it? Eight out of ten. Hashtag Stephen King. Hashtag creepy. Hashtag messed up. Hashtag Shawshank. Yeah. I will not allow it. What's the matter, Darth Vader? <laughs> Listen to me, Luke. You do not want to turn that page. Wow, I guess this kid has the power to trap you inside the book, almost like you're frozen in carbonite or whatever. Child, the power of the dark side compels you. Luke, join me, and together we can rule the galaxy. And uh, one of the best albums to hit us in the ear holes this year is Full Nelson by Massive Wagons. Have you heard of them? Probably yes, not. I They're have. from England. Oh, really? No, definitely no, not. No, no, you haven't. But <laughs> now no. you have. So download Full <laughs> Nelson. They took what they had been building on with their previous three releases and went into overdrive. It's fun, loud, and amazing. 92 out of 100. Buy it, listen, love it. Are they sad like The Cure? Because I'm really into a sad Cure. No, phase actually, right after now. you're done no. listening to The Cure and you're feeling really down, yeah. listen to Massive Wagons. Oh, it'll, it'll lift you right back lift up. me back up, and then I can go into some uh, Depeche mode and get sad again. Yes, you could. Yeah, so. Okay. Okay, so when I point here, what do you do? You say, ah, because you're a werewolf, okay? And when I point here, what do you do? Ah, because you're a werewolf. Okay, anytime you're ready, Darth Vader. What is that? Is that a rookie? It's a wolf man. Are you scared, Darth Vader? <laughs> I am not afraid of a wolf. I am not afraid of a man. So no, I am not afraid of a wolf man. It could bite you. I could never. I am wearing armor. Do you know what? That about sums it up today for Tweet Beat. So for everything that you need to be watching, reading, listening to, playing, follow at Hank and Kelso and at Shaw Punch TV. My name is Hank, that's Tony, our special guest Luke. See you next time on Tweet Beat. How come we don't call it Tony and Kelso? What is that all about? What's this Hank and Kelso? That's uh, a web exclusive. Oh, so we, nice. can we actually make that Hank and Tony then? Is that Kelso? Got it, miss. Oof. <laughs> a little hot up here, eh? Yeah. yeah. Welcome to The Collector. Today my guest knows everything about comics and he'll help you organize yours. Hello, welcome to The Collector. My friend here today is Steve Boyd. Steve Boyd! Steve Boyd. And we're here today to talk about something that he does for a living, which would be actually really exciting. You work for a, a website called Comic Collector Live. Dot com. Um, I know that you do, you buy and sell on the, on the, on the site, but you also organize. I'm really interested in the whole organ, organization aspect of your site because I have comics laying all over my floor. So what, what kind of stuff can I do with organizing my books? Well, first off, having comics on your floor makes you awesome. Yeah. So that's the first thing you need to that's know. That's what so, I do. So basically, ComicCollectorLive.com is a, uh, a website that allows collectors that are, you know, whether you're new or experienced collectors like us to uh, cat catalog, manage, keep track, and uh, organize your comic book collection through uh, uh, our online extensive database that we have. So stuff. basically then you have a database of actual titles and I'm just actually adding my what I have onto, your, onto the database and then it's my database as well then? Like I have my own separate area where it keeps uh, what I have as an inventory? Yeah, so if you, c if you come to the website for the first time and uh, you you can look on our website and not be a registered member you can all of the information is available for free to anybody that wants to just come to the site and just look around if they want to uh, we have uh, the database entry is in there for people to see you can see the biographical information on a book like if you know who the cover artist was uh, who appeared in the book and stuff like that but then you can also catalog that book using our software product uh, cool. that you can download Okay, so because of that then, um, we're looking at having like all kinds of covers and you actually have pictures of each cover so I can see what I'm actually inputting. Yes. And you do that. You're the one who actually inputs covers. I, so, I, I'm not the only one. Yeah, okay. We have okay. our entire community of people. We have, we have hundreds of thousands of members on our website and they, they put the information in also. I am one of a, an elite group, yeah. an elite force that 
that monitors those images that go into the database every week. But you yeah. must be reading hundreds of comics every week. You would think. You would think <laughs> yeah. I would be. I, I'm looking at covers every, yeah, week. every so, week. So you get yeah, to see all I, the good stuff. I'm the guy who comes in and says, hey, did you get the one in 10 to yeah. this book? Did you get the one in 25? It's it's quite awesome. disgusting these days. So here you go. So also then you're also, you can buy and you can sell on this site as well, which so, so I can go in there and actually put my, my comics in. And then if I'm deciding like, oh, you know, I really don't want this anymore. I could actually sell it as well. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. you can, for example, you know, I know there's some people that are driving around with spawn stuff in their car, for example, and may not, <laughs> may that. not know exactly what to do with it. That's so neat. if you're tired That's of it, neat. if you have, if you have comic books or toys, either one, cause we do not just comic books, we do action figures, trading cards, and things like that. You catalog them on the site through our product, but then if you want to get rid of them, you can create your own online store on our website and sell them to our community. So if I gave you my spawn toys that I've been riding around in my car, you will actually do, you'll do I this for me? I can offer no personal guarantees <laughs> that they will sell, but I guarantee you Well, you know the dresser I was spawned. I've had them for like all summer. I've had these spawn toys the in cool, my car. Only the cool guys. I got comics on my floor. I got boxes everywhere. It's crazy. Who's it's the crazy. character? Who is it? Who, uh, who do I have? Yeah. I think it's the file. No, it's the I don't even know. There's I don't even know anymore. Violator. Violator. All maybe. these bad. Yeah. yeah Defiler. Defiler. Who knows? <laughs> I don't all know. All these Anything bad. Names. That's the name Anything, of the. Yes, that's they're the name horrible of the names. bad guys. Okay, now you actually are a huge collector like me, and you also are able to put other things of your stuff online on your site. So I notice here that you brought some CGC books. Uh, you have other things other than comics. You have toys. Uh, you have actually art, so I can actually take my art and actually put it online and yes. keep and hold on and keep track of yep. what I have. Yep, you can. So when my stuff is is stored away in storage, I can look to see what I have. You can without having to go to a storage. Yeah, uh, area. and you can you can yeah. scan the image on and upload it on the website and yeah. let the world drool over what you own. Nice. So okay, so you have a lot of stuff yourself. You're a big collector. I do of stuff. So what kind of stuff are you collecting right now? Uh, first and foremost, I'm a comic book nerd. Yeah. I started collecting when I was, uh, like seriously, when I was seven. And I actually opened up my first store when I was 15. Wow. Yeah, and I was, I was just a little guy. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it, it's grown into different things, uh, not just comics, but action figures and stuff. Yeah. I, I'm the guy who will beat you up for the last exclusive toy at Toys R Us if they have it. You, know, don't, so. you don't say that. No, that's, I, not, that's mean. You don't want to no. be that guy. No, you don't. Everyone don't hates want, that guy. You don't want to be that guy. I yeah. got I, I got uh, told once that I was the mean person I wrecked someone's childhood because I was grabbing stuff. Really? I was like, well, I was there. I watched two guys <laughs> get into there. a fist fight uh, over a white tiger zord when Power Rangers was big <laughs> oh. in the 90s. It was the greatest thing ever. I just wish they'd have had cell phones back oh. then. All right. I, I appreciate you coming in and talking about your site, uh, sure. comiccollectorlive.com. And I know that it's, we've actually used it at our store before, and it works really well, and it's great to uh, just to catalog and buy and sell all this stuff. All right, let's uh, let's move on to our next segment. Thanks everybody for watching the collector, Steve Boyd. Punch TV is brought to you in part by Amazing Stories, providing Saskatoon with comics, games, toys, graphic novels, T-shirts, and more for over 22 years. Online at AmazingStoriesComics.com. In person on Eighth Street in Saskatoon. Hey movie lovers, I'm Craig Siliphant, the Movie Geek, and this is 5 Minute Film School on Punch TV. Today's episode is all about computers, so I wanted to focus on the horrors of CGI in movies, TV, and video games. And not just a rant about how practical effects are better, and that CGI Yoda looks weird compared to Puppet Yoda, though that is true. But today, we're going to talk about something called the Uncanny Valley. Let's start at the beginning. Some of you might be asking, what is CGI? Well, CGI stands for Computer Generated Imagery. It's using graphics or animation created with a computer in a piece of media, like a movie or video game. Special effects in movies used to be done with what we call practical effects. So like I said, in Empire Strikes Back, Yoda's done with a puppet, a practical effect. But by the prequels, George Lucas made him and most of the surroundings with computer graphics. There are plenty of excellent uses of CGI, but the puppet Yoda is way better. I'll save that rant for another day. So many rants. But if you've been following movies since the advent of graphics in movies like Tron or T2, you know they've gotten better over time. 
However, they're still not always believable. I find that machinery and metal often looks better than what I'd call organics, people, aliens, anything that has skin and eyes, anything that emotes. And there's a theory that says the human brain hates this stuff too. It's called the Uncanny Valley. First discovered by a robotics professor named Masahiro Mori in 1970, the Uncanny Valley is when you have a level of realism in robots in which the human observer has a negative reaction. Take a look at this weird looking robot. <laughs> Freaky. Basically, our brain recognizes that the thing is supposed to be human, but that it isn't quite right, and it actually reacts in horror or revulsion. The degree to which we react is the valley itself. There's a spectrum. There are ins and outs and controversies and disagreements with this theory, but it basically states that as a robot is made to look more human, some observer's emotional response to the robot becomes positive and empathetic, until it reaches a point in the valley where the response quickly becomes strong revulsion. As the robot's appearance continues to become less distinguishable from a human being, the emotional response becomes positive once again and approaches human empathy levels. Cute robot, empathy. Too lifelike, revolting, nightmare fuel. But wait, aren't we supposed to be talking about movies? Yes, that's where CGI comes in. As the use of CGI increases, we encounter the uncanny valley more and more. Think of Grand Moff Tarkin in Rogue One, an animated representation of the late actor Peter Cushing from the original Star Wars. In Rogue One, he doesn't pass as real, he upsets me. And even if you think he passes as real, you can't argue that Princess Leia at the end works as she stares at us with her dead eyes. Speaking of dead eyes, the best illustration of this is from the series of animated features that Robert Zemeckis made, especially the Polar Express, because Christmas should be horrifying. The characters are downright creepy, with glassy, vacant eyes and empty-looking faces. His version of A Christmas Carol didn't do much better. A movie like Tintin has some impressive CGI, but still dips into the uncanny valley. In fact, if you make an animated character too lifelike, the brain no longer reads it as good animation, but as reality with something wrong with it. That's why, in a good Pixar movie, you have a character like Mr. Incredible that looks great, but is also designed with a little bit of cartoonishness to him. Hollywood started to realize that the Uncanny Valley was a thing when there was a negative reaction to a baby character in an early Pixar short called The Tin Toy. Of course, this isn't contained to CGI. Check out this screenshot from The Terminator that's a practical effect. But it actually works here because you're supposed to feel revulsion. He's not supposed to read as real. That also works in places like horror movies that feature, say, ventriloquist dummies. Will we ever be able to do a convincing CGI character that doesn't have us all creeped out? Maybe, maybe not. Until then, I'll be complaining about all the bad CGI that's out there. I'm Craig Silliphant, the Movie Geek, and this was 5 Minute Film School on Punch TV. Keep your dukes up. Well, before we wrap up this episode of Punch TV, I wanted to give a couple of recommendations of books that uh, deal with computers. I mean, usually the bad guy is a computer in a lot of uh, big name superhero stuff, like Brainiac is a computer and Modoc is a computer in the Marvel world. He kind of redeemed himself in the, the Secret Avengers line because uh, he had a bit of a crush on Maria Hill. So he joined uh, the forces for good for a change. But it's weird because like when he was designed, he was the mental organism designed for computing. So really he should be Modofk. Um, and then he kind of went haywire and became designed for killing. So ended up with a K. But he's a he's a bad computer but turn good computer guy thing. Anyways, I love him. He's really ugly. Um, but here are some other computer books that you might like to enjoy. Um, I'm a big fan of Ed Pisker. We've talked about his work on Avengers and we've talked about his uh, work on X-Men and of course, Hip Hop Family Tree. Well, this is one of his early works um, and it is about a hacker. He, it's uh, the story of this kid named Kevin who goes by the uh, computer handle hacker uh, Boing Thump. And uh, he learns at an early age that he can whistle the frequency that allows him to make free phone calls long distance. And that just starts him on a path of uh, learning to be a hacker and learning about computers and then being on the run and going to jail. And it's based on some stories that really happened, but it's a really fun little thing. And it went on the computer 
and I requested it from the library and I got it. So I thought that was kind of fitting. Anyways, it's a really fun little read. You might want to check it out. It's not as well known as some of his other works, but it's really cool. And then this one here, which is called 1001 Drawings by Gary Panter. And what he did is on his uh, website, he basically asked people to submit words and words and they put them together. So two or three words became a drawing. And that's what this book is. So if you're a Gary Panter fan or you just want to sort of see what somebody might put together because of rando words, it could not have happened without a computer. And neither could this show. And that wraps things up for another episode of Punch TV. I want to say a big thank you to our cast and our crew. Of course, a big thank you to The Riz. And thank you to Steve Boyd for coming down and sharing their expertise with us. And in the meantime, Keep your dukes up. Do you know what? What? I got a Stormtrooper costume at you? home for you Halloween. Do? Guess what I'm going to be? Scooby-Doo. That's not even a scary costume. Scooby Doo is not scary, no, but not. he. Uh, but you could get a poop people. costume. A poop emoji. <laughs> 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 Tony's costume. Uh, not funny, man. Yeah.